recently I saw some uh, videos on YouTube about anemometers and uh, I found them uh, teaching something that's not correct and uh, I looked at many of them and uh, they all showed the same thing. Uh, below I've linked to four of those videos and uh, you can uh, look at those and see what I'm talking about. The first video is by a television weatherman uh, explaining to a viewer how an anemometer works. Uh, the second one is a person interfacing a homemade inner anemometer to a microcomputer and shows you how to write the code to uh, do the calculation for the wind speed. Uh, the third one is a high school science teacher, uh, well it's an eighth grade teacher, uh, showing students how to build a, an anemometer and then how to calculate the wind speed using it. And the fourth one is a science channel for kids uh, doing the same thing. And all of them incorrectly teach uh, the wrong thing about a, an anemometer. So let me start by showing you what you'll find in all these videos. Basically, they show an anemometer uh, with a certain radius and basically how to calculate the, the circumference that these cups run through and if you can measure the revolutions per minute you can end up with how many feet per hour the cups are going and the wind speed is then just the feet per hour divided by the feet per mile and you end up with the wind speed in miles per hour but this is totally incorrect. And let, let's go now to the correct interpretation of how an anemometer works. Okay, next let's look at how anemometers actually work. And uh, we can forget about all the math for a moment, and uh, maybe we can see how it works without resorting to the math. Okay, this would represent just two of the four cups on the anemometer. And with the wind blowing on that cup in that direction, and of course as this turns, the wind is blowing on this cup as well. Now, if the cup is moving at the same speed as the wind, there's no force on it. Uh, there has to be a difference between the speed of the cup and the speed of the wind to get a force on that cup. Now, why do we need a force on the cup? Well, in order to drive this cup back into the wind. So if this cup is moving at the speed of the wind, the relative velocity between this cup and the wind is twice as high because that cup is moving at the same speed as the wind. So if you understand that, uh, you realize that this cannot turn where this cup is moving at the speed of the wind. Uh, so at this point, Let's resort to some math, just in case you're not totally convinced. And uh, below I've uh, put a link to this article called Drag Coefficient in Wikipedia. And it gives drag coefficients for various shapes. And uh, in the case of a cup, here are the drag coefficients blowing into the cup, you see a much higher coefficient of drag than blowing into the rounded side of the cup. So the force equation is the force on an object 
is one half rho. Rho is the density of the air in this case. And that varies with atmospheric pressure and temperature. And then V is the velocity of the airflow. And you see that's squared. So it's not, <clears throat> it's not a linear function. Then this is the coefficient of drag. And this is the area of the object, cross-sectional area of the object that the ear is acting on. So in order to not have this accelerating, force A has to be equal force B. When that's true, this can be turning at a constant velocity. Now remember, there's two more cups out here that I haven't shown. I'm just trying to keep it simple at this point. So if we say that force A is equal to force B, then this is the coefficient of drag of A, and this is the coefficient of drag of B, which are these two numbers. And so there's an equal sign here. So everything pretty much cancels out, and we end up with this simplification here. And after we plug these numbers in, we end up with this term equal to 0.517. And then if we do our cross multiply and add and subtract, we end up with this number. But the velocity of the cup is only 31.8% the velocity of the wind. Now, that would only be true for this two cup setup. If we have the other two cups out here, the force on this cup has to also be able to force those two cups across the wind. So it'll end up actually going slower. So the point actually is that for any given design, the thing has to be calibrated. And uh, you can't just uh, stick it out a car window because of the wind flowing around the car. Uh, well, you could if you have another anemometer to calibrate it with. But if you're relying on the speedometer of the car, uh, it won't work in that, in that way. Uh, years ago, I calibrated one by putting it on the end of a 10-foot long piece of conduit, which I mounted vertically sticking out of the front of my car. And uh, that was the way I did it to avoid the additional airflow velocity around the car. So this is how they actually work, uh, taking the circumference here and assuming that it's spinning at the same velocity as the air is not correct. And uh, so, like I say, for any given design, there's going to be forces on the support arms and so forth. And uh, in the other videos, you saw difference different shapes for the cups. So there's many variables. So for any given design, you have to calibrate it. So that's the main point. That's how they actually work.